This is the story of how a secretary turned a $180 investment into $7 million before she passed away. Grace Groner was born in 1909 in Lake County, Illinois. She became an orphan at the age of 12 and was taken in by a member of her small farming community. She never got married or had children, yet had many friends who loved her for the happy person that she was. And as she loved to walk everywhere, she never owned a car and lived a quiet life in a one-bedroom cottage where she worked as a secretary for her entire career. She got her clothes from second-hand jumble sales and felt no urge to keep up with her neighbours. Though she was frugal and careful with her money, she was no cheapskate. She travelled extensively upon her retirement, and occasionally funnelled anonymous gifts through to needy local residents. When she died in 2010, at the age of 100, she left a gift of $7.2 million to the Lake Forest College, where she used to attend to start a scholarship programme for students that couldn't afford the tuition fees. The money will help around 1,300 Lake Forest students pursue internships and study abroad programmes that they may not have had the chance to take advantage without Grace's hefty donation. So how did she amass such a fortune with such modest and humble beginnings? Grace didn't inherit this fortune, she didn't win any lotteries, and she didn't scrimp and scrave all of her life. In 1935, at age 25, during the Great Depression, she secured a job as a secretary at Abbott Pharmaceuticals, and worked there for the next 43 years. During her first year in this role, she bought three shares of Abbott stock for a total investment of $180. Then, over the next 75 years, all she did was hold on to those shares, She didn't add any extra capital investment, but instead just reinvested all dividends that came her way into purchasing more Abbott shares. There were many stock splits over the 75 years, and along with the shares bought from reinvested dividends, she passed away with over 100,000 shares of Abbott stock. In 2010, Abbott was paying a dividend of $1.72 per share. So her portfolio was generating a dividend income of $172,000 annually. The thing I love most about this story is that no one knew that this unassuming and humble elderly woman had amassed this incredible fortune until after her passing. William Marlott, her attorney and longtime friend, told a local newspaper after her death, She didn't have the material needs that other people have. She could have lived in any house in Lake Forest, but she chose not to. She enjoyed other people, and every friend that she had was a friend for who she was. They weren't friends for what she had. So, what can we learn from this story? For me, it's another example that investors that position themselves into high-quality companies, with growing earnings and increasing dividends, and hold for long periods of time, tend to end up doing quite well. While it's fair to call this an extreme case, I feel that the story of Grace Groner can teach us four important lessons about life and wealth management. Number one, the snowball effect of compounded reinvested dividends over time is an extremely powerful tool. Instead of investing, if Grace had just saved her $180 in a bank at 2% interest for 75 years, she would have died with $794.85, which wouldn't have gone very far as a donation to a college scholarship program. However, her Abbott stock grew at an annualised return of 15.2%, and that higher rate of return, compounded over a very long period of time, made all the difference. By reinvesting the dividends that she received, she was able to keep purchasing more shares, that paid more dividends. So, over time, the snowball effect took hold and generated Grace's great wealth. She just invested and stayed invested, and allowed the power of compounding to work for her, and crucially, she never interrupted that process of compounding, which led to such substantial returns. Number two, Grace had a simple, long-term strategy. She held on to her stock through 13 recessions, 
numerous other corrections, multiple global wars, and difficult economic times that may have forced a number of other investors to sell out. This is surely the original example of diamond hands. She didn't try and trade her shares, or try and time the market. She didn't sell a position because of any negative news, or get scared by pessimistic earnings reports. She kept her eye on the long term, so time was definitely her greatest ally. Number 3. Investing from an early age can make an enormous difference in the final portfolio value. If Grace had invested that same $180 in 1945, instead of 1935, she would have died with $1.7 million, instead of $7.2 million. Time is a powerful leveraging tool. The 10-year difference between investing for 65 years, or 75 years, was a staggering $5.5 million. Number 4. Lastly, what I feel was the most important lesson is that Grace was happy, and probably would have been even without her vast fortune. She wasn't defined by her wealth, as her friends and colleagues had no idea of her net worth. Her end goal was to leave an everlasting legacy, in sending so many students in financial need to college, which is such an unselfish final act of her long life. It seems that being able to leave that legacy gave her more delight and pleasure than any mansion, vehicle or material possession ever could. Her legacy will live on forever, through the thousands of college graduates that she's helped, and a story will hopefully also inspire the next generation of investors. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you have, then please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'd also be really interested to hear your thoughts on the video in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.